Hey guys, Jexy here. Welcome back to another video. Okay, so today's video is going to be a little bit more lighthearted. Um, I am going to tell you a story that was quite frightening at the time, uh, but you know, this was years ago and, and everybody's fine. Um, but you know, we always talk about whether we would, uh, how we would react in certain situations. And this was one that I reacted in a way that I did not expect. <laughs> Okay, so we've all heard the terms like fight, flight, or freeze, and it's in regards to how you react to something, right? Like some people, you know, when you get that adrenaline, when something's happening, and, and we don't always know whether we're going to be somebody who, who's going to fight, whether we're going to run, whether we're going to freeze, right? Like we don't know that until we're faced in a situation, right? And so I can say that from my experience, I think I'm a fighter, <laughs> Um, which actually kind of, I guess it doesn't really surprise me because I get like that mama bear thing where I have to protect my kids. But like, this was a situation where like, I totally didn't expect to react the way that I did. Um, okay, so let me back up and tell you what happened. So I was living uh, in a rental house in Southern Maryland. This was before, you know, um, and yeah, this was even before I got clean. So this was, this was a while ago and probably like 2010 or something, 2011. Somewhere like somewhere around there. So I was in my bathroom, which is in the back of my house. And it must have been a spring day. All the windows are open. And all of a sudden, I hear screaming. I hear dogs screaming. Like if you've never heard dogs screaming, like it was it was one of those sounds where you're like, oh my gosh. You know, my kids were downstairs playing in the playroom together. And I was like, oh my gosh. And so I ran from my back bedroom, through my bedroom, down the hallway, down the steps, and out the front door. Now, I remind you, I can't see what's happening. So there's like a big tree in my yard, and I can tell that this screaming stuff is happening from across the street. But even once I'm out my front door, I still can't see what's happening. I'm just running towards the screaming, right? And I get there, and like, this is what my brain sees. Like, I, the, what I see is our neighbor who's across the street, she had two pit bulls, one that was very vicious, and I'll give you a background of the dog after, but um, she has her pit bull, and one of our other neighbors from up the street was walking her smaller, probably a medium-sized dog, and the, the pit bull's mouth was gripped onto this medium-sized dog's head, and he wasn't letting it go, like at all. He wasn't shaking, he wasn't, he was just gripped, right? And the owner of the pit bull is punching the dog in the head and the like in the snout and the dog's not moving and so both and these are older women right they're both screaming the especially the woman whose dog is in this mouth of this pit bull is freaking out now i will tell you what we knew prior to this happening right is that this pit bull was vicious um the 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 male owner of the dog apparently was involved in like politics or something in the town and so he had kind of gotten away in a in a way that uh other people wouldn't so prior to this event this dog actually attacked um their housekeeper it was supposed to be in a crate the housekeeper came in the dog was not in the crate he got out of the crate or something and attacked the housekeeper so that had happened prior to this i'll tell you about the stuff that happened after after the story so I run across the street and I see this pit bull and like, I'm not even thinking, right? Like this all happens super fast. Like I'm not even thinking. And I run over and I take my hands onto this medium sized dog's head and I run my fingers into the pit bull's mouth, hoping that I can try to get this dog's head out. So as I'm running my hands into the mouth, the pit bull actually lets go. The owner gets the dog, brings the dog inside. So it was not until after that I was like, I just stuck my hands in the mouth of a vicious pit bull. Now, I'm not saying all pit bulls are vicious. This one was. This one was known to be aggressive. This dog was known to be a danger. Um, and, you know, with pit bulls, they don't let go. And so having a dangerous pit bull is just irresponsible anyway. And it was scary because they lived across the street. And at the time, I had two little kids. Um, 
So the situation was resolved. The you know she brings her pit bull in, and then the other woman is saying to me, and she this the woman with the medium sized dog actually worked for the town, and I had seen her many times. I've known who she was, and she's like, "What do I do? What do I do? Oh my gosh, my poor dog!" And I was like, "He seems fine, but I would absolutely take him to the vet, get him checked out. You know, no no harm in getting him checked." Like, and she's like, "Well, I don't want it. You know, I guess they were friendly." Um, she's like, "I don't want to get her dog in trouble." I was like, "Forget that. Like, I'm sorry, but." Your dog was just attacked. Like, you don't have to say who did it if you don't want to, but you should still get your dog checked. So it turns out the dog had, like, two or three, like, pretty deep puncture wounds from the pit bull's teeth. They needed a quick stitch. Dog was fine. Uh, and I got a fruit basket out of the deal. Uh, the woman with the medium-sized dog sent me a fruit basket because she was so grateful. And she hand-delivered it, too. She bought it, and she hand-delivered it to me. I was like, thank you so much for saving my dog's life. And, you know, look, I, I, let's be real. I All I did was react, and I probably, I, I the pit bull was probably just as shocked as I was. Like, why are you sticking your hands in my mouth? You're insane, right? And that's probably why I let go. It was probably just confusion, luck of the draw. But, you know, it was one of those situations where you don't know how you're going to respond, right? And, like, when I tell the story back, you know, this all happens so fast. I mean, we're talking seconds, right? That I was like in my bathroom, ran out of the house, saw what was going on, went to help, right? And, you know, looking back, I'm like, that was dumb. That was super dumb. Uh, don't ever do that. Don't ever do that, right? But I didn't think about it. Like I could tell myself now, like, don't do that. Um, but like, to give you an idea of how dangerous this dog was after this. So I don't know whether she told about whose dog did this to her dog. My guess is that she probably didn't. She worked for the town, so she probably would have had enough uh, pull that if she had told that this was now the second instance of this dog biting um, aggressively, like not like, oh, somebody, you know, like, look, sometimes dogs bite because like you you step on them or you push them or they there's little kids, they do something, it scares the dog, right? But like these were like both the housekeeper thing and this were completely unprovoked attacks. What happened was is this dog was inside the house and the, the owner thought the door was all the way closed and apparently it wasn't. So when he, when this other, you know, woman's walking her dog in front of his house, the dog got out and just attacked completely unprovoked, right? So this is not like a, oh, they saw each other walking. Like, no, like this dog came out of the house to attack this dog. Um, so I guess... She never said if she did, maybe this, the owner's pull was like enough to like make it so they didn't put this dog down, which should have been put down. This was a really dangerous dog because it was only like maybe six months later, I found out from my daughter's bus driver who happened to live in our neighborhood that her son was attacked by this dog. Um, the owner is walking the pit bull and he, her son is playing outside and the pit bull pulls out of the owner's leash, like the pulls the leash out of the owner's hand, or he pulled so hard the owner couldn't stop the leash. I don't remember which it was. I don't remember whether the leash was pulled out of his hand or the dog was so strong it pulled him with the leash. Um, and it bit onto the back of this kid's calf. And I saw the pictures of what they did to this calf. It was, I mean, it was ugly. It was bad. It was punctured it was bruised like really bruised I mean luckily the kid was fine kids bounce back but like I still can't believe that this man was allowed because I know animal control was there after that attack right and I had told the bus driver that from my understanding her son was at least attack number three right that's a third attack that's a grown woman a dog and now a child and you know while walked on a leash that time. And it's like, if you can't keep control of your dog when it's on a leash and it's going to be that dangerous to the neighborhood kids, like you either need to, you need to do something, right? Like I'm not a favor of like putting dogs down. Like that's not what I'm about, but like this dog, this was a problem. And they had another pit bull that was fine. Super friendly, super nice. Right. So it's not the breed, it's the dog. Um, but, like, I still go back and think about, like, the, the fact that, like, I heard screaming, I heard dog yelling, I heard people screaming, and I, like, ran towards the danger, you know? And I can look back at other instances in my life where, like, I I ran towards danger. I'll tell you guys another story, maybe next, maybe another video about the time where um, 
there was a car accident and the police weren't there yet and it was really bad and I had gotten out to assist in that. I don't know. I feel like I have something in me that like if I can help, like I want to help, right? right? Like sometimes to my own detriment. Um, it's one of the reasons I have this YouTube channel. Like, look, like I'm never, I'm never going to have like 5 million subscribers, right? Like that's never going to be the case for this channel, right? Like I'm just not that exciting. Mostly I talk about recovery from addiction and like occasionally I talk about some other stuff. Plus we do trivia, right? Like it's not anything that's going to be like amazing subscri amount of subscribers, right? But if I can just help a couple of people by by coming on here and sharing my experience and telling stories and, and talking with you guys, then like it's totally worth it for me because like it's just in my nature to like try to help. I don't know. So do you know? Here's my question for you guys. I want to know. Have you ever been in a situation where it was like fight, flight, or freeze? And like what did you do? Um, I know a lot of people who like freeze up, right? Like that seems to be the most common from what I've experienced. Um, my sister, my sister is flight. Uh, a real, I'll, I'll, we were at a, uh, NA meeting once and a fight broke out and I went to go help the, break up the fight. And my sister's like, nope, we're out. And we left. <laughs> so, um, we don't react the same way. Like even in that situation, like I'm going to go try to break up a fight between two grown men. And my sister's like, nope, nope, we're gone. And, um, I don't know. So tell me, tell me if you're a fight, flight or freeze. Um, leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please leave a like. It helps me so much. Um, if you can subscribe to the channel, if you want to hear more stuff from me, that's helpful too. I have a Discord, I have a Patreon, I have all that stuff down below. Uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye, everyone.